Hey, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to Life Mastery Decoded, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality with mind mastery, emotional management, and meditation. Welcome to today's podcast. Hey, ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you healthy. And if you are not healthy, you're not feeling optimum, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So it has been a couple of weeks, maybe even longer. Um, I'm a little bit unaware of (laughs) the time um, (laughs) from when I last recorded to where I am today because a lot has happened and I'm hoping that this experience is going to give me a new outlook on life, the even bigger, uh, more courageous outlook. So uh, it was like December 13th, I believe, I tested positive for COVID. And uh, it was, it really kicked my ass um, in a way that I didn't think was possible. I have had some really low moments low emotional moments, um, even more than just moments in my life. And I have never felt so low, but let me, let me tell you about this. So it started, it started, uh, kind of a tickle in my throat, you know, starting to kind of feel a little something. And then Amy got tested and she tested positive. And so we're assuming that, well, you know, um, we're, we're probably all going to be (laughs) getting it. And the boys were with us and, and uh, you may think your opinion, um, of whatever, your opinion about me or the, you know, getting this viral infection. Uh, and that's okay, but I want to talk about something bigger, not just our opinion about the vaccine or not getting the vaccine or sick or not getting sick or giving it to each other or not. You know, we quarantined and we, but the four of us stayed together. And it was, it was a long journey. We're just coming to the last couple of days of it here. And, um, but I want to talk about something that was bigger than just this sickness that, that we acquired in this household. There was something just a little bit different about this sickness. You know, we've all gotten sick. We've all had colds and flus and different, you know, different illnesses throughout our lives that, you know, knock us down and, and force us to be in bed for a while or whatever. Okay. This one was different. The first couple of days, the first few, four or five days were like, you know, a little tickle, a little cough, um, kind of tired, but different kind of tired, like, you know, um, kind of bringing on this fatigue, like you just don't really want to do anything. Right. For me, day seven was not my lucky number. It was the most amount of fatigue I have ever felt in my life. And this fatigue, like I can't even think of a word other than like extreme or severe to go along with it of how incredibly zero I was and could not get out of bed. And I was tired, but it was about being physically tired versus tired, like sleepy. And I remember laying in bed and it was, I don't know, 4.30 in the morning or something. And I remember laying in bed and thinking, you know, this is like, this is weird. Like I feel kind of weird and I, I feel tired, but it's a weird kind of tired. And I feel like something is just, you know, like this must be what fatigue feels like. Right. So anyway, and so as I'm, as I'm sitting there, um, Amy had, was supposed to go back to work. And I'm like, I, I can't take care of the boys. Like I can't get out of bed. And I just, I would roll over and I would go back to sleep and you'd think, oh, I'm resting. Right. A couple hours later, I would wake up and you'd think, oh, I'd feel better. I got a little bit more energy, nothing, still zero. And this went on for three days straight and it didn't get better. All of a sudden on day four, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting out of bed. It's like, now I can go to the bathroom, but then I have to go back and lay down and mental fog beyond measure. You cannot make decisions, cannot think straight, can't answer questions. Just, I mean, I can talk, but you just didn't have 
the capacity. And the only thing that I can even remotely equate it to is I just feel empty, just zero. Empty tank, ground zero, nothing. Well, it's one thing to have that kind of fatigue and to be laying in bed and you think, oh, well, I'll read some books or I'll get some stuff done or I'll work on a few things. No, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to watch TV. You don't want to read a book. You sort of want to sleep, but yet you're not that kind, it's not that kind of tired, but you just can't get up. It takes everything in you to sit up in bed. You don't want to eat. You don't, nothing, okay? I think you got the picture now. <laughs> the problem that came with this is the emotional, this burden that fell upon me. It was the worst I have ever felt. And I have had some really tough times that I just am never going to get better. I'm never going to feel better again. It was hopelessness. It was desperate. It was depressed, sad, uh, unbelievable. It was just this really, really, really low, heavy feeling emotion. As I watch Amy, who's probably a five on the scale, run around and make dinner and go, you know, go and collect, you know, some food for the boys, you know, from people who were helping us and just go take care of things and you take care of the dogs and take care of the kids and I'm just like basically dead in bed and she would come in and check on me come in and you know let's give you something to drink or you know here's some you know ibuprofen here's whatever do you need to go to the bathroom do you need anything and I'm like no 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 whatever and when she would leave and shut the door it's like the darkness would just creep back and the only thing that I can think of, I have to do something because I am like, it's like falling into this dark abyss and I am just sinking deeper and deeper into this emotional state where I don't, it's not going to help me heal. It's not going to help me to rise above this. I'm a zero right now. What can I do to become a one? And it was everything in me this one evening, it was probably one o'clock in the morning, she was sleeping and I was just in there and I was just trying to heal. And I had this weird stomach, kind of, it was sort of like a nervous stomach, but yet the energy was not moving and squirmy like a nervous stomach. But it was just there and it was just kind of gross. I'm like, oh, I, I don't think I could, you know, don't add barfing to this, like that would be upsetting to me. And um, so I remember just repeating the word heal. And then as my, where my stomach was hurting, I would put my hands there and I would just try to do some healing. And it was, it was like everything in me to try to balance this emotional state. That was the thing that I was fighting the worst. This fatigue was awful. I wouldn't, wouldn't, um, how do you say that? I, I wouldn't uh, give this to anybody, right? It was awful, awful, awful. But the emotional state that came with it was worse. And dealing with this for four days was really, really tough and really challenging. And um, so I remember, you know, holding my sacral chakra and my solar plexus and just putting my, putting my hands basically on my stomach where I could feel this upsetness in my stomach and just whatever, you know, this illness has brought to me and how it was affecting me and just heal. And then just trying to bring my numbers up a little bit. And I would bring them up to a one. And if I took my attention off, it was like seconds later, I was back down to a zero again. It was, um, it was really, it was really interesting because I don't, I don't, and I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't always have all this emotional control. I mean, I'm human and sometimes I forget, but I do have tools to use when I am really working to bring my emotional state up and when I really want to feel good. And it was, uh, it was, it was pretty challenging. It was pretty tough, but I did it. And I remember, I remember praying, this was Christmas Eve evening, 
and tomorrow morning is Christmas. And I remember praying, I'm like, you can take every single present back if I just can feel good tomorrow and I can just start to feel better and, uh, and have this fatigue gone. And by God in the universe, did I feel better um, on Christmas morning. I was able to get up and move around and you know sit out there uh, Christmas with the boys and with Amy and we had a really good run there for you know a couple of hours in the morning and then we took a nap for like an hour and then that was it and it was good. And I'm not saying oh it was it and everything was great then but I was definitely definitely improved and I think setting the intention and using different words and really recognizing that this emotional state was not going to last forever but it could. It could last forever because my, my thought about it, the words I used to describe it, the words I used to continue the momentum would definitely have kept it there. And I would have been sick a lot longer. And I would still be battling the fatigue. And it was, it was challenging, but using those words and listening to the voice in my head as I was in this place to say, you know what, the words I'm using, the words I'm thinking right now, the, the beliefs that are starting to settle, into this emotional state are like, I'm never going to get better. Like, this is never going to go away. I'm never going to go outside again. I'm never going to go play. I'm never going to walk the dogs. I'm never going to have fun. I am never going to go on a hike again. And it was, it was very like demoralizing. I was just becoming devastated and just losing all footing. And I said, wait, no, don't, don't think that. And you just can't go there. You can't think that way. And because I just, in that moment, in that second, as, these, as I was looking at the thoughts that were coming through and I was aware of them, I was listening to them. I was listening to the doubt. And as I started to take charge and say, I'm going to combat this doubt. I'm going to change the words. And all I could come up with was one word. I couldn't, I couldn't configure a whole sentence or a, a a new story or a new paragraph, it was one word and it was heal. It was just the word heal. And then it was just the word up, you know, bringing up my energy and just give me more energy. And that's all it took. And I felt like I could start to see a shift begin to happen in the energy that I was working with, even from this place of desperation, even from this place of holy moly and with it being i could look in my head hear those sounds hear those words and then make a decision those words are not helping me i'm going to choose new words and thus in choosing new words things started to shift they started to change i started to feel better it did not happen overnight it did not happen within the hour it did not happen but I do truly believe that if I would have continued to say, I'm heading down this dark path and I'm not going to be able to get out, I would still be feeling that fatigue today. So I changed my words, but I had to look at the thinking. So if you are ever finding your, yourself in a dark time like that, in a, in a dark position where you're just hearing the words that you're saying, but those words are not supporting your desire, is to simply start changing the words, even if you pick only one word and you just repeat it over and over and over and over again until you fall asleep, until things start to shift, start changing the words that you're saying to yourself and watch the energy start to shift around you. If you like this episode and look forward to future episodes, please consider making a small monthly donation to help support this podcast. Thank you for listening. If you're looking for a community to join and want more access to me, please join my online community where I offer other resources for your transformational journey. Shockers for Beginners is an energy-based community that is highly active and growing every day. The Meditation Room TC is our online store where we offer products and services for your meditation needs. Mm-hmm.